Have you ever wondered how this smooth zoomable map works? The kind that does not lag no matter how far you zoom in. It's all thanks to vector tile. Tiny packets of geospatial data that your map render on the fly. And here is the cool part. You can actually generate your own vector tiles straight from your PostGIS database. In this video, I'll show you how to turn your spatial data into vector tiles using just PostgreSQL, PostGIS and few simple SQL tricks. We'll go from raw data to ready to serve vector tile. You can use in tool like MapLibre or Leaflet. So if you, if you have ever wanted to power your own maps like the pros, stay tuned. This is where database meets map magic. Let's get started. All right, so in last video, I have shown you like how to upload your uh, geospatial data or the shape file to the Postgres SQL database. And now I have this geo database uh, with a US population table, which is the shape file of US um, population. And if you don't know how to do this, please watch my previous video in this playlist, which might be over here in the uh, right side corner. And um, this data will look like this. So basically using this online tool map shaper. So this I'm showing you the data and in order to create the vector tiles. So I'm going to use the PG tiles or this library. So basically after you download this package, uh, so basically you will be able to run this and then it will automatically detect your spatial tables and then uh, you will uh, also like get the idea about vector tiles. After that, you just need to like check the build files uh, based on your whichever OS you are in. Uh, since I'm in Windows, so basically I'm going to download the Windows and then I'm going to extract it. So basically extract, so now it's over here maybe i'll cut it and then paste it here in the same folder and then delete these two things all right so now inside my pg tiles upload ssv folder so i have these downloaded assets uh, downloaded codes and then if i open those with the pg tiles or i mean visual studio code editor it will look like this and basically you will get this dot exe file right and in the config file so this is the config example based on your requirement you can change uh, all the the settings but for now maybe i'll copy this file and then paste it inside pg tile sorb and then maybe i'll rename it to the rename it and then remove the example dot example thing and then this is my connection and here i'm going to change only one thing that's db connection parameter so basically my database is postgres sql and my username is postgres and then my password is admin or whatever password you have and then my host is localhost and then it's running in 5432 port and then my database name is geo and that's all so if i save it properly uh, then i think i can open up my terminal and then i can move to the pg tile serve folder and then i can run that tile serve with my config file config and config is pg tile serve dot to ml right and then if you run it so it will ask for permission and then allow it and then right now it says that it's running on under 7800 port and then maybe if i go to the local host 7 7800 you will see all the tiles you have it's like mini database or mini uh, dashboard for your vector tile project and in the index.json you will see all the uh, tables that are spatial and then that ha that can be like um, used to create the vector tiles and of course um, maybe if i check this 
JSON. So basically I have only one table. That's why I have this only one setting called public US population. That's my table, right? So it's right here inside geo database. So I have this US population table inside public schema, right? And similarly, um, these are all the like field name and their description and type of this uh, US population table. And uh, basically if I go back, then I can also like preview my vector tiles. So these are the vector tiles I have. And of course uh, it will also output all the column names and then these are the like tables I have. And then if I click, I'll get all the properties and this is the exact vector tile I have. And then while zooming in or zooming out, if I check my terminal, so you will get uh, the lots of like get request to the particular like zoom level and X, Y uh, tiles. And then it will create the PBF uh, format, which is also like, uh, file format for the vector tile and yeah so that's my vector tile and in order to use this in um, any of like your map for example map livre or the uh, or the like for example uh, leaflet then you just need to like create the uh, create the file uh, maybe in the uh, directory over here maybe i'll write index.html and then I'm going to copy and paste the code and then try to explain what is it here inside this index file. So basically um, we set up our body with like full map covered and then this is my ID of map. And then this is the map container with my center zoom level and then this is the style. So basically for style I'm using the OSM map is my like base map. And then uh, for the vector one, so I'm writing this um, since my vector tile is served from this port and then my vector tile name is public.us population and then this zxy will take care of my zoom level and xy, um, xy tiles and .pbf. So basically uh, this is my tile and then um, my source will be public.us population and this is my like vector layer and uh, these are some of the setting for example whenever i click my uh, vector tile then i i want to output the state name and then the population from 2010 and then these are few settings for mouse enter and mouse leave and if you did that and uh, you can simply run it via uh, live server extension and if you click it or um, like open your index.html file you'll see your vector tile it's sort of right here, right? And then if you click it, then you will of course get the uh, state name and the population, uh, whatever we put in that pop-up pop up location, right? And yeah, that's all about like creating vector tiles. It's quite easy uh, using this vector tile method. You can solve your like very large geodata. For example, if, uh, in, in case of like GeoJSON, the browser can handle up to like 20 or 30 YAMB of data. But if you put it in the PostGIS and then serve it uh, using like this vector tile, then um, you can like even serve the 10 tens of GB of your data in a single run. So it's quite popular technology. I hope uh, you will adopt it in your future web GIS tags and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.